Pirates of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Tim O'Connor, Cal Bellini, Brad David, Tonight's episode, Trail of the Serpent. Let's go. 2.42. Okay. Let's change. Just closing, guys. Barbarian's just been down to the night depository. Can't help you. George. Fifty old Titus. Well, if I had it, uh, it's like I said, it's already in the bank. It's in the box. Yeah, it's in that um, tin box you got stashed under the counter somewhere. I can't keep giving you money. There's just not that kind of profit in a small market like this. Rich.
Angela, get an ambulance, quick! You have the right to remain silent. You know what you can do with your right! Yeah, listen to Punk. That's your word, man. Just your word. Your gun. <laughs> People own the store. They saw the whole thing, Lieutenant. Keep an eye on Inspector Keller. This is Lieutenant Stone. George Barbario. Angelo. And that's the guy who killed your policeman. He was a leader. They called themselves the Cobras. I've heard about them, Mrs. Barbario. Barbario. Could we do this inside, please? Sure. He's okay, because I see him from roof later on. There must have been... There must have been 50 fuzz around <laughs> Wait a minute. Chick, you gotta know what they're gonna do to him, right? <sighs> <sighs> I mean, the buddy didn't dump me, so I don't dump him. I get away, that's all. <laughs> you guys want a piece of it? Whoa! <laughs> job for your kid brother, Richie. They're like a lot of the boys. The, the traditions are breaking down. They, they live on the, the street. I tried to help them at first. Maybe I was wrong. I give them groceries every now and then. Or a couple bucks. They took advantage. It just got out of hand. It happens, Mrs. Barbario. And I'm sorry about your store. Oh, the market, we can put back together. But the dead policemen, sorry. Descriptions of help, though. We'll get them for really. Would you excuse us, please? Please. Sure. Fred. I want to make a sweep through a four-square block area around this market. And we better do it quick before those kids disappear. Good enough, Lieutenant. It's a manpower. We still have eight, ten men on the scene. Good. That'll make uh, four two-man teams, huh? We'll divvy up the blocks and house the house. Steve, I think if we're going to shake doorknobs, it would be wise if we split up. Each of us take a uniform. Right. Huh? Right. You take Fred. I'll take Rojack. I'll hold it. Come on, Rojack. You got the short straw this time. 
There's an old pigeon coop on that roof, Mike. We tagged some juveniles up there a couple of months ago. All right, let's try it. I'll take the back. Jeff, take the front. Hi. Hi. How are you? You a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's right. Somebody? Uh huh, that's right. Guys in black jackets, maybe? You see them? Black jackets with cobras on the back. Cobras? I don't know. They were running. Black jackets, yeah. How many were? Four. They went into a place way down there. You show me. Nobody lives there. There's a back door, but they still might be in there. I just saw them from our house. We live right down the street. Good. Good. Will you do me a favor? Sure. You know that building I was standing in front of? A policeman will be coming out of it soon. You tell him where I am, and then tell him to call in. Call in? That's right. Sure. Come on. Where's Rojack? Did you see the policeman? Did Just you give the piece to the kid? You're spreading the But it's home for you for about as long as it takes. <laughs> rotating units all weekend. Between us and the, and the Secret Service, those boys will be safe when they were in their cradles. All right, Stan. Later. Boy, these governor's conventions, they, if, I don't know why they don't pick on Miami for a change. Yeah. You got anything? Mike? Yeah. No. What do you think? Wait just a second, Steve. We're gonna get this little diddly. I really envy you guys out in the streets. I thought this promotion was going to mean this much more paperwork. I'm telling you, I don't Roy, it's been an hour and a half since Mike and I split up. Now, You're I think... talking about maybe the most experienced guy in the department. I'm just talking about my partner, a guy I know better than anybody. A guy who would not wander around without checking in and leaving at 10-7. Well, it's only been an hour and a half. You said so yourself. I want some men, Roy. Oh, Steve. A cop got gunned down right where we were tonight. And you got to report the right up. Roy, right, okay, Roy, let's get the on The only it. report I'm working on is Mike's. Until then... Until then, you're not going to do your job, huh? Going to let your nerves take over when your head would be used at most. Look, Steve, baby, I know that her brother died tonight, and I know what it can do to every man on the force. But I can't let it panic us into actions that can set off a real powder cake. Wait, I don't understand. I mean the kids that run in those gangs. They don't have all that much of a life to start with, you know. Right. Well, I'm not going to give them that kind of an incentive to build this thing into something bigger than it is by sending an army out onto their turf. Well, that's all fine, but Mike's still out there. Mike can handle himself. Yeah. Devin. All right, put him on. Hello? This is Lieutenant Devitt speaking. Can I help you? 
tracer on this thing and climb on it yourself. Uh, how'd that go again? I said we got a cop. And you can forget about any tricks with the phone because we ain't gonna wrap that long. Okay. Well, what are you talking about? Who's we? We is us. <laughs> you don't gotta know who we are. You just gotta know who we got. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that you got a police officer with you somewhere? Yeah, badge number 897. That ring any bells? Okay, all right, just get them going as soon as they find the location. Now, come me back in a debit's line. I said anyone can call in and give us a number out of the air like that. It doesn't prove much. Yeah, and I said forget about trying to check out this call, remember? You want to check out something, you check out where uh, Lieutenant Michael Stone is right now. Let me talk to him. Forget it. The only way you talk to him again is to let Buddy go. Buddy? Buddy Sims. You booked him tonight. Uh, he's the one who killed the police officer? Yeah, you don't let him go, and uh, you can order up two funerals. Ah, uh, you get this and get it good. Threats like that cut nothing here. You got till 9 a.m. I'm telling you, department policy. And I'm telling you 9 o'clock. Buddy walks by then, or, uh, or this guy's head comes off. Come on, come on. What do you got? What do you mean, nothing? You got an area, a section, anything? Okay, all right. Where are they holding this guy, buddy? General emergency. Light's better over here. I just thought we could trade spots. Better for his eyes. What are you reading? A fella can learn a lot from books. Place he's never been, things he's never seen. You read a lot? Have you ever read Robin Hood? <laughs> I think I read that when I was about your age. There's another one, uh, Three Musketeers. Both those books loaded with adventure. Have you read either one of them? You ought to. Ask your teachers about them. What grade are you in? He doesn't go to school. He doesn't go to Why not? I guess it doesn't matter to you. It certainly does. It matters to all of us. A kid like that, who likes books, doesn't get a chance to read them. I know how to read books. Of course you can. But what kind of books? Can you pick the right books? That's what school is for. It teaches you to pick the right book. I don't need school. You don't need school? Who told you? Did you tell him that? Hey, maybe you better shut up. You two are brothers, aren't you? Yeah, your brother's all right. David, come here. Split. We did it. You called. Well, tell him. <laughs> well, <laughs> he told him. <laughs> My man, uh, Chick laid it on him very heavy. Uh, he gave him till nine tomorrow. What did they say? They said, forget it. <laughs> well, what they say, what they do are two different things. No way. There's going to be no trade for me tomorrow or for anybody, ever. Just doesn't work that way. That's cold. Well, then you better get ready to kiss it off, Jack.
Who are they and where'd they take them? By me, baby. Well, look, buddy, there's no way you can climb out of this one. You mean all of a sudden I'm worth more than one of your own kind? Nobody wearing one of those jackets is worth anything, man, unless they turn them loose. Well, I'm sorry, man. What can I do about it? Like, I'm in here and they're out there, you know? You can tell us where they are. Keep them from making the same mistake you did. The man says, man, it's a free world. Stop this, stop this. You know where he is and you're gonna talk. See? He killed Traconis. His friends are the same. They don't care. Wait, wait a minute, man. Who doesn't care? Look, you want me to tell you how much I care, baby? Come here, man. That's right, punk. Still no deals. You gonna give me those men now? Boy, if we ever had a, a prayer a crack in that kid, you sure blew it. He thinks now we care so much that, that we're gonna crack, you know All that. All I you? care about is Mike right now, what's facing him and what he would do for me in the same spot. He used his head. All right, all right, he used his head. But you have got to give me those men. You gotta let me comb those alleys, building by building, door by door. I don't have to let you do anything the way you wound up. There's gonna be a sweep, then I'll lead it. What are you talking about if? I got 50 governors arriving in this city tomorrow. Every one of them, and every available man is... You made me up. one man who wouldn't pull double duty for Mike. That's not the point. Then what is? Look, look, Steve, forgetting that we all know this can happen to any one of us walking in, and forgetting we're more than a family. We got a whole city to look after. Roy, I'm asking for one section, 10 lousy blocks. That's all, Roy. Mm, yeah, yeah. All right, you got it. You can pull Lessing and Harris, Kincaid and Carpenter to start with. I'll call Juvenile and see if they got anything for us. I gotta juggle that security set up on a convention with CPU. Get us some more men. You give me a 10 20 every 15 minutes, you. Where'd he go? Yeah. This is Devitt here. Hmm. Stopped. What time you got? I don't. Must be about two, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it must be. Where's, uh, Davy? Is that what you call him? Say, could you spare another cup of that? Bright kid, Davy, you know. <laughs> the way he suckered me into this little setup. If he hadn't done it just right, he never would have had me. You know, you're wrong in telling him that he doesn't have to go to school. How old is he, 14 or 15? Pretty important years in a kid's life. Hey, you know something? What? You talk too much. Why do you do this for a guy who murdered somebody? Look. We don't sit together, what have we got? What's Davey gonna have if you keep telling him that this is the way? Hey, uh, we gotta talk. Man, they have got black and whites all over the place. I figure we better move this guy before buddy gets out, you know? This might not be the best spot. This the guy? War's over, fellas. They're putting out a dragnet, and a decision has to be made. Who usually made them for you, buddy? Shut up! Wasn't thinking too good, was he? Getting you into all this, pretty messy.
Watching Jerry. Uh, me and Rich is going to scan another place. Skulls, warlords. Nothing there. Nothing. How goes it? What do you got, Stan? It's got to be a new club. None of the guys in Juvie ever heard of them. Invaders I got. Grim Reapers, no match, no Cobras. We're just going back to the packet on his buddy Sims, finding out who he was busted with and who he ran Where's with. Where's Lucas, huh? Home. His wife has a 103 fever. Well, Lucas is the man, isn't he? He's the guy that's into the whole thing with the gangs, right? Well, so Stan here. We're into it. I mean, it's okay. Two guys were. Sims was called up three months ago, suspicion of GT Auto with a chick Kramer. And we had a warrant on Sims, Kramer, and a Richard Soon. A suspicion ABW. So that checks out with the Bible. Yeah, let's run that one, Stan. Rings a bell. So Richard Soon. The Choppers. Soon Kramer, Willard Lou. The Choppers. Cobras must be a spin off the same gang. What about a phone drop, headquarters, anything we can make a move of? Right, right here. Right here. Pool hall over on Clay. What about our name? Davis, Ed Davis. Look, Stan, I appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Getting the coffee that Richie poured. <laughs> and that coffee has got to be. Sick. At the place there? Yeah, it should be. Nobody's up. Let's get him up there. Look, I just run a business. They want to shoot pool here, that's their business. Juvenile Records just told us that this is the home for the whole club. I wouldn't know. You know names? I know names, faces. Faces, huh? Good, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are we going? Downtown. What for? We're looking at some faces. Well, who's going to open up here? How long is this going to take? That's not our business. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay. Just wait a minute. Okay, uh, I know some names, maybe. A few. Uh, first names, that is. Billy. Buddy.
How's your head? You cracked it on the floor when you went down. Bullet took a chunk out of your side. You lost some blood, but I plugged it with a towel. Don't worry. You won't die from it. We won't let you. Word's out. His jackets are underground. So just go up here a little further, and then we'll go to the alleys on foot. You know, that guy could have told us more. He gave us all he had. Should have leaned on him. Yeah, that's not your style. I worked for 13 years, shoulder to shoulder with the same guy. I think I know what you're going through. You can't change your M.O., Steve. You're liable to get caught looking the wrong way yourself. How do you think they got him? Well, he's gonna have to tell us that himself when we find him. Inspectors 8-1, code 1025, 411, Fremont. Officers report possible location of kidnap involving Lieutenant Mike Stone. Will you respond? 81, 10 4 we'll respond. Fremont, huh? That gang hounds out in the pool, yeah, huh? They just might be smart enough to stay as far away from this possible. Get it, baby. Sorry, Lieutenant. False alarm. What do you mean, false alarm? Yeah, we scared these two up down the block. They ran. We thought we had something. Turned out to be six sticks of grass. What are you doing this far off the sweep? We just got word they'd be holed up down here someplace. Word was wrong. It came from a very good source, Inspector. The name's Johnny Dolan. Dolan? That little guy has that newspaper stand down in Gary? Yeah, a distributor now. On the streets with a truck early every day. He says he saw Mike? Yeah, with three Cobras. That possible Cobras get down here? No way, man. Why not? Cobras never drift past 22nd. What time this guy, uh, Dolan, say he saw Mike? Uh, it was about uh, 4.30, wasn't it, Ben? Maybe a quarter of five. Okay. Okay. How are you guys? Let's go. Move. I don't know. I don't buy it. You got a hostage, you don't walk him around the streets, you have him hold up. I'll bet he's not more than 10 blocks away from where he started. That's all these back alleys and the way these buildings are stacked up. We could look in there all day and never find him. We got less than two hours. Take these two downtown, then get your tails back on the sweep. Yes, sir. Hey, where can we find this guy, Dolan? Oh, he's probably still out making drops. He was heading north toward Telegraph Hill when he stopped us. Oh, he's driving an old pickup. Dolan? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Devitt with Homicide. Yeah, sure. Used to be robbery, I remember. How's it going, Lieutenant? You gave some information to one of our radio units about an hour ago. Yeah, I thought maybe it was something you should know about. A big guy I seen around, uh, I think his name is Stone. He was being hustled off by some of those gang kids. It didn't look right to me, you what know. What kind of jackets they're wearing? Huh? The gang, what kind of jackets were they wearing? Um, oh, uh, those club jackets, you know. What club, Johnny? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I just seen him walking down the street. And you saw their faces? Uh, no. You mean you came up from behind them then? Is that it? Yeah, that's right. And you saw the back of their jackets? Well, yeah. 
Well, what was on him? What design? What picture? Well, I don't know. I didn't notice. But you noticed they're wearing jackets. Yeah. Why? What was so special about the jackets? Look, I give you guys a lot of inside stuff now. Well, what I give it us now, Johnny. Well, what do you mean? I'm giving it to you straight. No, you're not. Straight's a gang called the Cobras. They like to be seen. They wear a snake on their back in bright orange. You couldn't have missed it. Why, Johnny? Why what? Why the lie? Now, look, guys. We have looked. And we know you're having trouble on your corners. Trouble with gangs. You know there's trouble everywhere. You know that. We know you filed charges against the Cobras. Two guys in particular, Chick Kramer and a Buddy Sims. Robbery and assault. Then you dropped the charges. Why? I figured it was best. But they just got out of line once. Nothing's happened since. How much you pay them to make sure? Nothing. I come off it. Names, Johnny. Names. 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 Oh, all right. One of them was Kramer. The other ones I don't know. Kid with dark hair and a, another Chinese stocky, not too tall. Where? Where was this? They stopped me up on Connecticut. They told me to call in. Told me if I didn't. Connecticut and what? 18th, right on the corner. That's two blocks from where Mike's good throw jack. A block from the pool hall. That could be the phone drop. Hey, you guys, you gotta protect me. Hey, fellas, you. Uh, uh... He didn't do it. Chick? Here. How about you? I'm okay. What do you say we split it 50-50? Okay. Thanks. Hey, say. That's a pretty fancy ring. Dragon, huh? Symbol for the towel. You know the town? I know about it. The way, right? David. It's the mystery of life. And the dragon represents it. Something that man thought up to stand for an idea he, well, he couldn't explain or he couldn't see. How do you know all that? Oh, books. Books, really. I told you. You can learn an awful lot from good books. Where did you get that? From my brother. And my father. Family ring? I thought the oldest son always kept it. You read that in a book, too? Uh, no, no. <laughs> a friend told me. Good friend. You two weren't born here, were you? Hong Kong. You've been here how long? A couple of three years? Five. Five years. And your father, he come here with you too? Yeah. And died here. In the land of opportunity. Gotta... I'm gonna get some information out of that dude. Inspectors 81, we have your caller on the line. Inspectors 81. 8124, keep him coming. Is that the only phone you got in here? Yeah, that's it.
ten minutes. What about Davy? Huh? What's going to happen to him when this is all over? They're going to put him in a foster home? Or he's going to live in a dump like this and scrounge your living out of garbage cans? He stays with me, same as always. Sure. You're going to be dead, and so am I. Maybe you'll be in Quentin with a life, Joel. That's a fact, Richard. You could look a fact in the eye and not even recognize it. What's the matter with you, Richard? You a slow learner? Facts. That's what you've been laying on me? That's right, facts. Fact. You helped kill a cop. Fact. You're going to serve time for it. That's right. That is right. Even if you gave me that gun right now, you're going to serve time. So, what have I got to lose? David, you bonehead. With you and the slammer, who's going to keep his nose clean? Davy will have had it. Fact, you've had it. The minute Buddy pulled that trigger on Serconis, you had it. Your brother still has a chance. Small chance, but a chance. You see... I could make sure that he got in with a good family. Took care of him. Made sure that he got to school regularly. Bought him books. Talked to him. Took him out to ball games. Made sure he got a kick in the slats if he hooked up with a guy like Buddy. It's a small chance, Richard. What's the handle? What do you want? Well, first... I don't expect you to help me. Just don't stop me. Don't stop me. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go to that door. And I'm going to walk out. I wouldn't. I have to. I have to, Richard. And just... I don't know, eight, seven minutes. That psycho that you're letting call the shots, he's gonna walk in here and blow my head off. And I'm not gonna sit here and wait for that to happen. You give us a break, Richard, Davy, and me. He's wearing that ring because you and your father believed in him. You felt he was the one that had a chance, didn't you? He was the one in the family that was going to make it. Well, don't you be the one that blows it for him, Richard. Okay, here it goes. Is that it? Yeah. Chick's not the one who's going to do it, you know. It's going to have to be you who's going to pull that trigger. You're the one that's going to have to live with it.
Not a word. Where you got him? It's your move, Richard. Is he going to let you? I don't know. I just don't know. Thank God. What little I know about Oriental heritage, I learned from the Chinese scout on Iwa. Once he said, the trail of the serpent leads to death. Steve. Steve. That kid bought that bullet a long time ago. There was no way to buy it back. Ben, show me that report you finished. The biography of Dumas? How'd you happen to pick him? Oh, I heard of him. He wrote the Three Musketeers. Yeah, I heard of him. Hey, you're doing all right, Davy. I'm glad. I'll see you soon, huh? Sure. Yeah. I don't know if he's gonna go for it or not. Time, that's all. Just take time and a lot of what that family's given him. I hope you're right. Oh, he's a bright kid. Listen, maybe he won't grow up to be a cop, but at least he'll know why we're around. <laughs> Production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Roscoe Lee Brown, Brenda Sykes, Carol Lawson, Alan Emerson. A Trout in the Milk.
Last night, I dreamed a city. I blew apart the dew of my mind, and there, floating on the mist with bridges hung from stars, was my city. It was a lovely place on which to lay my sleepy head. A city to remember long years after I'm dead. But memory, you say, must die with death. It exits in concert with our last breath. So how dream up a city from the fragility of nine scheming futility without the ability to cry at the dying of my night or to mourn at the morn of my day? Rejoice! <laughs> there is a pulse to the dream. It lives. I give it to you. They love you. It's not enough. You called, now I'm here, so what's so important? You're with Rob Evanauer again. Oh, come on, Yale. Famous poet like you must have more urgent things on his agenda. Janae, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life. Then don't. Nobody has me on an exclusive, least of all you. If Rob Evanauer meets my price... You want me to believe you're just modeling for him? I quote you. A model, model, models. Baby. Evan Hour is the end of the line. You have lived your life. Now let me live mine. Not with Rob Evan Hour. <laughs> Something funny? The two of you. I tell him I'm coming here and he skies. I tell you I'm going back and you go into an all time downer. So why stay in the middle? Because it beats being out in the cold. Ciao, Daddy. Would you mind, Mr. Dancy? What's your name? Melissa. Melissa, from the Greek, it means honeybee. Did you know that, Melissa? No, Mr. Dancy. Go to Greece. I loved it. You will too. Give my regards to Aristotle. He knew that poetry is of graver import than history. Thank you. My pleasure. Because she's good, that's why. Try it. Just go on and try it. You're crazy if you think you can. <laughs> here fast. Wings of mercury. Yeah, that stuff can poison you. Is he dead? Not yet. What have you got, Bryles? Well, his name is Rob Evanhauer, painter. 28, single. My witness said it looked like someone loaded him into a 45 and pulled the trigger the way he came out of that window. What do you got, Mike? Hearing, I guess. See if you can spot the rest of this, huh? Right. I want this whole place brushed. I don't care if there are a hundred prints, I want them all. Mike. Take a look at this. They're the same. Yep. I want copies of this. Come here. What do you think of that? That's assault with intent. Or murder number two, if Evanhauer doesn't make it. Sekulovich. Come here. Now, this is uh, 
probably the victims, the blood and the hair, but nurse it along for latents, will you? So where do you want to start? Earrings. Yeah. Maybe Omar will play with us. Could be. Good luck, fellas. Lieutenant. I know you do, Omar. Now tell me, listen carefully. Anybody else make earrings like that? Well, if they did, I'd make something else. You're doing very nice work, Omar. This one's my favorite. You have good taste. Who's wearing it? Them. The earrings come in pairs. Oh, come on, Omar, come on. But they're cash customers, man. They don't give me their name. I want this one, Omar. Come on now, boy. Very pretty girl. I've never seen her. She's wearing your earring. She has taste, too. Who bought it and when? But, Lieutenant, I do a volume business, man. It's a small unit profit, but a tremendous overturn. Why, well, in the last quarter alone, I must have dealt with 16 or 17 clients. Look, I've, I've honestly, I haven't seen her. Sit down, will you, Omar? You're flirting with a nosebleed. They're not gonna go along with us. One might. Who's that? Seven, you. If Evan Howard dies, it'll be the greatest contribution to art since the invention of the frame. Savinu, you're an impressionist. Oh, you like that, huh? All he can afford are mug shots. <laughs> How about this? Evan Howard Garbage. No, the model. Jenea. Last name. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. Think back. When did you ever bother to ask them their last names? She ever model for you? Just on that one. But not now, man. Now it's top dollar. From Evan Howard? A little hanky-panky there, maybe. You know, you could save us a lot of time making the grand tour of the model agencies. Okay, fellas. Just that I hate fingering someone who benched Mr. Rob Evanhauer. Paint yourself some crocodile tears. <laughs> Dancy. Yale, Portland, Dancy? They were living under the same roof. Well, 30 seconds is all I'd need, Doctor. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for your call. Is that Evan Howard? Coma. Dancy? He's still not home, but he's got two shows at the Balladeer tonight. Uh, we all met at the summit and agreed we'd arrived. But at the gate, they asked me who I was. I said, I'm the Loch Ness Monster. A Scottish wetback. A Mexican plum pudding. A dam in the river of convention. I said, um, I'm a cheater who prospered, a cog in the system, a Chinese smorgasbord, a man who delivers dissension. I said, I'm a negative thinker. Of that, I am positive. A killer who couldn't, a killer who wouldn't, a man who deserved your attention. me one eggnog, please. You know, in 1964, Mr. Dancy, 
I hitchhiked from Berkeley to listen to you right here. Oh, a dash of masochism blighted your youth. I was a primitive performer in those days, my friend. No, no, you were good even then. You were quite a spellbinder. <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the North Beach would offer you one, but... Um... Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. We're looking for Jenea, Mr. Dancy. What's a Jenea? <laughs> the, the sign outside says you do two shows tonight. I sure hate to see you miss the second one. One four four zero Fremont. Fourteen forty Fremont. I thank you. My pleasure. Mike. Now that was a joint you were smoking, wasn't it? Looked like one, smelled like one. Well, now are you uh, finally getting a little soft in your old age? Or why didn't you bust him? For what? Possession of oregano? Get out of here. I see. It's a Chinese hand laundry. It's like the oregano. It's a put on. We've been had. I know, I know we've been had, but why? <laughs> Where's Dancy? He's split. What time's the second show? Well, there ain't gonna be one. Uh, can you guys keep it down? I don't want to lose the rest of the house. Well, where is he now? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> you better get sure. Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. I trust the grim and nerve-wracking aspects of your profession have indulged your sense of humor, my friends. There's much to be said for Chinese laundries. And oregano. Van goes upside down. I spend a good deal of time on my head. Uh, can I offer you anything? Information, of course, but um, maybe something reckless. Uh, five minutes worth, where um, three human beings might just sit down and salve the ills of the world. Mr. Dancy, it's been a very, very long day. Did Evanauer fall, or was he pushed? We never mentioned Evanauer. Come on, Lieutenant, the word's all over North Beach. Janae is your prime suspect. All we want to do is talk to her, Mr. Dancy. Dancy, if I make it rhyme, will you understand that the sooner we locate this girl, the better off she is? The poets don't rhyme much anymore. I don't even know if they reason. The game's over, I know it. I don't think you'll find her just now. Not until she sorts things out for her own satisfaction. Well, look. Does she work? City of Paris. Never misses a day.
Sorry you had to wait so long. Police, right? Uh, yeah. Jungle Grapevine. It's the first time in ages we had to show the entire collection. I hope you weren't bored. No, 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 not at all. You see, um... Well, actually, this is the first time I've ever been to one of these. Really? See anything you liked? Leading and tasteless. No wonder models have the wrong kind of reputation. Oh, that's all right. Um, did you have to go to school to learn this job? Profession. Paying a lot better than a graduate medical student makes his first few years. <sighs> You're looking a lot better than any medical student I've ever seen. Thank you. And I don't even know your name. I'm Inspector Keller. Inspector what Keller? Stephen. I like Stephen better. Uh, I've never heard uh, the name of Jenea before. My father invented it. He has a way with words. Now, wait a minute. Is your father Yale Cortland Dancy? You didn't know? No, no. Well, daughter is the one word that seems to have eluded the most extensive vocabulary in the seven western states. But here I am babbling away when you've got the pressures of a great metropolis on your mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'd like to talk to you about an artist named Rob Evanhauer. Somebody told me he fell out of his window. Right. We think you might be able to help us. Sure. Anything. Downtown? Please. Let's go. I'm strictly old tops and blue jeans. Give me a few minutes to render unto Paris what is Paris's. Go ahead, I'll meet you here. You better. Excuse me, Dr. Ford. I've been thinking if uh, there are better facilities, you know, specialists that you would want to call in, anything at all that would help. It's too late. What? I'm sorry. Excuse me, uh, are you related to Mr. Evanhauer? No. I was just a friend. Well, could you tell me how I could get in touch with his family? No, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Look, is this important? I'm Lieutenant Stone, San Francisco Police. We may ask for an autopsy. Well, then, then it wasn't an accident? That's what we're trying to find out. Joe, excuse me. Joe, what was the cause of death? Well, off of what I've seen, I'd say uh, the fall. But it could have been the blow to the head. Either way, homicide. Well, you'll want an autopsy then. Well, as soon as we can get permission. See that lady? Has she been here all the time? I think so. Who is she? I don't know, she uh, said she was a friend. Well, it turned out I didn't have any. Thanks, Joe.
Where is she? Where's the girl? Chinese laundry again. I lost her. Oh, how? She psyched me out. Oh, she psyched you out. She such a number on me, you're not gonna believe. We'll find her, Mike. She's only an assault suspect. You're wrong. Evan Howard just died. We're in the murder. Well, I got something. Her last name's Dancy. Jonea Dancy? Right. Ingenuity runs in that family. Well, let's see if she can outwit an APB. Come on. <laughs> see her as a murder suspect. Oh, she has really charmed you. Now, huh? look, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. Evan Hour was a hot-headed, lousy artist, right? Owed a lot of people money. Big in the ladies' apartment, a brawler when he drank. I'm telling you, half the telephone directory was out to get him. Motive. Crime of passion. Somebody lost their cool and ran that plaster abstract right through Evan Hour's skull. Somebody, but not Janea Dancer, yeah? Oh, Mike, <laughs> let's just say, all right, that I'm taking a chapter out of your book. You call it hunch, instinct, anything you want, but I don't think she did it. Okay, buddy boy. Let's say it was somebody else. I still want to know why she ran. Yeah. Uh, 410. Not in. You the manager. I'm the keeper of the piece. Good. That makes three of us. That don't say search warrant. That says search warrant. Ain't locked, never is. Sea of Tranquility. She ran, but not here. What about the luggage? It looks like it's all here. Look for the earring. Corrigan covered every inch of her studio, didn't find a thing. I think whoever had it dumped it in the bay. Call in and get us a stakeout. Right. Mm. Hi, this is Killers. I'll see you in there, please. Do you want some advice? What? Stick to muck shots. Hi, Norm. Listen, we're at 410 Filbert Apartment 960. Uh, it's leased by Janea Dancy, female, black, age 22. Put a stake out on it for us, will you? Right, thanks a lot. What? Now, that car wasn't there before. Read the license. C-A-S-S-E-Y. Mm -hmm. Cassie. Was that something important? I don't know. Come on, let's find Dancy. Pigeons on the grass, alas. Have faith, they'll come. You both look like you lost something. We have. Your daughter. I lost her first. Evan Hour died. I heard. Find her, Dancy. Find her before we do. You keep in all 
those bad neighborhoods. I worry about you. Well, what'd you get on that stake on? Last report, no sign of the lady. You got a Rembrandt Van Savino in the outer lobby. You're supposed to be here at 2 o'clock. It's 3 now. Tell him he's late and send him in. You never asked me, Lieutenant. I mean, it's no secret. Some of the best people have records. 14 plain drunk. Seven D and D, three assaults, and two of those assaults were on Rob Evanhoe. I told you he's a lousy painter. He was a lousy painter. He died a few hours ago. I'll sketch him some flowers. Where were you when Evanhoe went through the window? Where you found me? People didn't see you there till later. Well, maybe I slept in. Can you prove that? Luckily, yeah. Maybe you were trying to thin out the competition. Now look, Lieutenant, don't you try to pin anything on your on easel, seven, no, no. And just give us the names to work on. What names? People he was seeing, artists, models, somebody owed him money, anything. I told you, I only knew the guy from Brawls and Bars. That's where I heard names. You know, conquests. He was a type who put a notch in his easel every time he scored. Shh. Names. Oh. Irene, Vicky, Janea, Lois, Cassandra, Michael. That was a girl named Michael. Uh, I don't know, man. That's that's all I know. That's all. Thank you, Samuel. You stay in town and please, please now, don't drip any paint on our sidewalks. Oh, I. Uh... I thought this might be a friendly call, so I, uh, well, it's kind of a gift. We can't take gifts. And throw it away. <laughs> How did you know I wanted to see you? I'm the seventh son of the seventh daughter. <laughs> Surveillance on Dance, he says he's still moving. Okay, we're going. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, you laugh. In New Guinea, a pig is sacred. I'm retiring to New Guinea. Well, before you retire, will you please check this through? <laughs> yeah, DMV, Sergeant Hasijan, San Francisco Homicide. I need a make on a personalized plate. Yeah. C-A-S-S-E-Y. That's right. Cassie. Whenever I gave your mother a hard time, I always found her here. I remember. You miss her? Yes. But I'm glad she's not here to see me now. Poor Mama. I had no right to either of you. Agreed. We're both older. We're both wiser. You want me to forgive you for ignoring me? All we have is each other. What's the matter, Yale? Getting old? Getting lonely? Afraid there'll be grandchildren you won't even know about? If my reasons for wanting you back are selfish, I suppose they are. All I can do is apologize and promise amends. Sorry, Daddy. No sale. Janaea, Rob Evanhower died. Oh, no. The law's been coming under me like you did it. What do you think? Where'd you get that? Your daughter asked you a question, Dancy. We'd like to hear the answer. I saw it in Evan Howard's studio. Just after, I... 
just after I launched him through his window into the gutter where he belonged. Mr. Dancy, you've waived your right to an attorney. Tape recorder's rolling. State your name, please. Yale Cortland Dancy. Occupation? Writer, poet, two-bit philosopher, and former father. Were you acquainted with an artist named Rob Evanhauer? I was. And what was your relationship to him? He was my enemy. As a man, as an artist, as a suitor to my daughter. And you were against him seeing your daughter? Of course. He was a crass bumbler. whose brush went down for the count every time it hit the canvas. Janae is royalty. A thing apart. She's unique. Like her father. Me, Lieutenant. I'm a beam in God's radiance. But my batteries are running low. Before the power failure, Mr. Dancy. In detail. Describe the fight you had with Evanhar on the day you claim you went to his studio. Uh, it began when I saw the earrings on a table. I bought them for Janea. When he denied that Janea had been there, I picked them up and I was waving them at him. My proof that he was lying. His hand reached out. After I hit him, clutching, he must have grabbed one. You're lying. No, I'm not. You took all the pieces, put them together, and trumped up this story just to protect Janea because you know she sent him through that window. That's the lie. Why, you're an intelligent man, but you confess without a lawyer? Because I intend to defend myself. Against what? I'm not holding you. Get his daughter. All right. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it happened. Why it happened. Even our was um, a dichotomous man, parading his passions on both sides of the street. Unfortunately, I caught him at it. You're losing me, Dancy. How clear do I have to make it? Clearer than that. Evanauer and I had a homosexual relationship. And gentlemen, I swear by all the fiber in my being that if Janea learns of this, I'll dedicate the rest of my life to killing you both. about the earring? Well, certain things should be obvious, my friends, like a trout in the milk. The earring, Mr. Dancy. I gave them to him. And gentlemen, my shame is not because of my relationship. It's because of my deceit in concealing it. If she'd known all along, Janea would have been more tolerant. For her to find out now, she'd never forgive me. And she is all I have.
yesterday. It wasn't something he planned. We're sure of that. It just, uh, it happened. It's almost like an accident. You know something, Steve Keller, for a human being, you're really a nice guy. What did you get on that Cassie plate? Cassie for Cassandra. Cassandra for Cassandra Lauritsen. Cassandra Lauritsen for... Mr. Harold Lauritsen? That's the one. The judge's wife. Why the courthouse? Because I called the home and the maid said Mrs. Lauritsen was with the judge. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Wait just a minute. Do we not already have a confessed killer? I pulled the file on Yale Dancy while they were booking him. 38 bookings on D&D. He drinks and gets crazy. 33 of those bookings were with women, and the other five he was alone. Now, does that spell queen to you? No. Yale Dancy is a Don Juan. A Lothario, Romeo, and one gosh darn good liar. What about the earring? Now you got me. That's the one that bothers me. That and Cassandra Loritzen's car parked in front of Janea's apartment. Well, I don't see any connection. You never met Judge Loritzen's child bride, eh? Nope. Well, she's a very plain lady, married to a guy old enough to be her grandfather. All right. Let's say she's into charity work. She goes to one of these benefits, meets a young, good-looking painter. He begins to hustle her. And when she realizes she's been hustled and sees Evan Howard with somebody like Janea Dancy, she hits him with the first thing she can grab. I don't know, Mike. I think you're reaching. No, 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 no. It's beginning to feel pretty good to me. There's a lady with something on her mind. Something's bothering you, all right. Conscience, maybe. Want to get her now? No, sir, not here. If I'm wrong, I don't want to hear about it right here in front of the courthouse. <laughs> Okay. Pacific Heights, and she's heading for the Embarcadero. Now? No, no, just hang with her. You know, Mike, there's still something you haven't told me. What was she doing in Janea's neighborhood yesterday? Let's start with dancing. All right. If he didn't kill Evan Howard, where do you get the earring? Well, we know it wasn't from Janea's apartment. Why not? Because we were there. So was C-A-S-S-E-Y. The judge's wife. And Dancy came later after uh, Cassie left it for someone else to find. <laughs> Stay with her. Let's say that it all fits, right? Right. She has the earring in her hand when she cracks Evan Howard over the head with that statue. Now, what happened to the earring? Dumps it in the bay or, or plants it on the girl she's jealous of. Welcome back, buddy boy. <laughs> Ferry building. Oh, man. Sorry. Okay, she can't get far. Come on, move it!
Hey, hold it. Let me see. They can't excuse what I did and neither, but he blackmailed me. Forgive me. Mike, she's going in the bay. Take it easy. Cassandra Luritsen. Leave me alone. It's not going to solve anything, man. Now, maybe you ought to let your husband know about this, instead of judging yourself. You had no right to take that. You would have found out about it sooner or later. This way, nobody else has to know about it. You can't bury what I did. What I am. I'm nothing to him now. We met at the hospital, remember? What does this mean? What it means, Mr. Dancy, is that we can prove a woman killed Rob Evanhauer. Do you have any idea what you've accomplished with this dreary and dogged detection? Do you? No, sir, I don't. Well, you stripped me of the one decent thing I could do for my daughter. You've erased the noble gesture, nullified the act. You put her in here. So help me. Okay, okay, Dancy. You didn't do it. She didn't do it. Go home. You hackneyed old ham. You phony, you flagrant fraud. I cried my eyes out thinking you'd be spending the rest of your life behind bars. Now I find out you'll only be leaning on them. 
Uh, hold on. Have a little respect. After all, I'm a published poet. I'm a man of letters. Who's selling who short? You're my father. Come on. They deserve each other. Oh, come on. They love each other. Yeah. It's obvious, like... What was that line he said? A trout in the milk. Beautiful. Really beautiful. You like that line, huh? Yeah. Well, that ain't Dancy. That's Thoreau. Come on. Henry David Thoreau. That's where Yale Cortland Dancy stole that line. You can't let this job stifle your mind, buddy boy. You gotta keep yourself free, easy. For cultural pursuits, you know. That's right. Good reading, good music, bowling. But you, that's all you can Deadhead, wake up! Come on, you're up and you're staying up, you crummy con. You lunk! No way you get your beauty sleep today, no matter how much you need it! Get off my back, Mouse. Come on! I'm uh, asking for it! Okay, we'll do it this way. I'm warning you. I'm ready. 
gonna let you have it. I'm scared. You're gonna get it first. <laughs> Go ahead, you big bag of wind. It's your last chance. After today, you get a new keeper, you big gorilla! After today! It is my last chance. <laughs> okay, you little pencil neck punk. You asked for it. You've been asking for it for 27 months. Help! Get him off me! Axe murderer! Make me happy! Hey, I'm in the mission, man. Time to hit the stage. 30 minutes, man. 6.30. California Human Resources Development wants this work furlough program to work, Jepson. Now, you blow it, you're gonna blow it for everybody. Oh, no chance. Well, you know your special conditions on this release? No booze. Think you can do that? Look, I've been drying almost three years in here. I mean, uh, in there. Well, keep it that way out there. Is your wife coming to pick you up? No, I... I kind of wanted to get the job first and surprise you. You know, be able to tell her I'm out for good. Yeah. Well, HRD has a list of five interviews for you. I think the best one is Herman's Boatyard. They have a policy of hiring parolees. But you don't see them until this afternoon. All right? Now, it's your job to make all the interviews or any other leads you might have. Newspapers, friends, whatever. Yes, sir. Bobby, you got 32 hours. Use them. I will. Now, you get a job you show us proof of employment by 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, you don't come back here. You dig it? Yes, sir. What do your work credits come to? Oh, uh, 23 bucks and some change. Let me bump it five. Hey, you... Mail it to me. You don't belong here, Jepson. So lay off the sauce and let's have no reunions. Okay? Yes, sir. Thanks. Good luck. That's a federal offense, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Steve, you made that one way, didn't you? You, out! Everybody, out! Oh, yeah, come out! Yeah. That's a mad one. <laughs> Were you all packed? Everything but my snorkel. Now, will you get out of here so I can finish this up? What is this? What, that liquor store gig? That's supposed to be on Olsen's desk already. Well, I just saw something I wanted to clear up. What are you talking about? Oh, man, you're gonna do it, aren't you? What? You're gonna sit here messing around till you come up with some excuse to stay. Well, you're keeping me here now. Hasidian told me. He told me six months ago when you signed up for this, uh, this charter thing you wouldn't go. Okay, buddy boy, out. He told me this would be, what, your, your fourth deposit in a row you lost. You know how much money that is? Yes, I've got an idea how much money that is. Whose paycheck do you think you're pulling it out of? The mayor's? You know, you're really a character. You don't trust anybody with your city, do you? My city? What are you talking about, my city? You know what I'm talking about. It's the truth. You don't take ten minutes for lunch. How are you going to go take ten days sitting under a tree? I tell you what I'm going to take. I'm going to take you apart in just ten seconds. All right, Lieutenant, that's it. All right. Oh, you come on. You have the right to remain silent? Out! 
All right, I'm coming back here this afternoon, 45 minutes before departure, and we code three. One. Then I am going to handcuff Two. you to that old three. lady tour director, Four. and then I'm going to take that Five. key and drop it right down Six. her moo moo. See you later. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Get out. <laughs> wiki, wiki. <laughs> well, that looks okay. You got a pretty good record. That's all right. Thanks. Let me ask you something. You still carry your ticket? Ticket? Your license, your driver's license. Well, it expired, you know, while I was inside. But it was never revoked or anything. What kind was it? Just a California license. You mean to tell me nobody told you you'd need a dual axle truck license here? No. But it's no trouble to pick that up, is it? I mean, I can go down there and get Look, myself fella, a... we really need a guy that knows how to handle the rigs here. Well, how much of a trick can that be? Learn to shift I more don't gears, know. that's... I don't know. Maybe I could ask the boss, huh? Crazy. You want me to go with you now? That's not good. He's gone till Tuesday out of town. Yeah, but Tuesday's too late. I've only got 29 Look, hours uh, left. I'm sorry. I really am. You've got to know how it is. Hey, that's all right. Look, uh, thanks for the time. How do you do, Mr. Jepson? Sit down, please. Thank you. You know, there was a very important item left incomplete on this form. What's that? Your typing skills. How many words a minute do you type? Well, I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I don't think I've ever been timed or anything. Shall we do it now? Sure. It's just out of my hands completely. I hope you really do understand. We would like to help. Sure. We'll keep your name on file. Yeah. Thanks. Say, excuse me. What time do you have? Ten minutes to twelve. Shake was buying. <laughs> What's the matter, buddy? I just want to talk to you for a minute. Some other time, maybe. I got an appointment now. Hey, that's not very friendly. Shake. We were never friends. Hey, Jepson. Jepson. Hey, Jepson, just a minute. Hey, listen, I got to talk to you. What about? It? When they spring you? This morning. Then you know. You know what? Oh, man, somebody's coming down on me real tough. I miss buying it by that much. There's only one guy I can think of who uh, might want to nail me. What'd you hear in the yard about McPhee? Nothing. Oh, listen, you had to hear something. He's after me, isn't he? He's still hot about that hassle we had, right? He's still got a steel plate in his head. How should he feel? Well, then he did it, didn't he? He put out a contract. Who'd he buy? Who? I don't know anything, man. Leave me alone, will you? Listen, you don't have to worry about that little punk. I can take care of him. But I gotta know who he turned loose on me. I don't know. That's a lie. You're lying. There are no secrets in there. Those walls got ears. 
He's got somebody out here looking for me, and you know who it is. Homicide Department, Lieutenant Mike Stone, fast. Stone, this is Jepson, Bobby Jepson. Hey, you gotta help me, man. You're all I got. Not even six hours. I was thinking about Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Look, as soon as we get the report, let me take it over, all right? We'll see. You said his problem's drinking? Was. But the call said he was coming out of a bar when it happened. You think... I'll know what I think when I have something to think about. Right. Turn on this corner. I don't know, Mike. I think he went out on a limb when he got busted. Limb? What limb? I made a court appearance. Big deal. As a character witness, I'd say that's a little unusual, isn't it? Oh, he's a good kid. Manslaughter, huh? Cracked the guy over the skull three times his size. Self-defense. Guy never got up. Did you see it happen? Didn't have to. I've seen that boy in action since he was 12. I coached them myself in the police athletic league. Never missed a game when he was all state halfback in high school. No way he plays it dirty. The judge didn't agree. Well, it happens. Yeah. Right here. guy named Shaco. Herb Shaco? Yeah, you know him? I had that pleasure once. It's narcotics, right? Right. You got the witness? Yeah, he's the guy at the pool table. He was at the bus stop. Said he saw Jepson shove Shaco. I got him, Mike. Okay. Mike, thanks for coming. Now, what are you doing in a place like this? Mike, listen, I know No, can't... you listen. Now, you had a condition on that pass. This place or any place like it was off limits. Now, what are you doing? Mike, I never touched a drop, I swear. I started to, but I didn't have to. You can ask him. So what happened? I was starting to leave when Shaco stopped me. Wanted to buy a round. You know him from inside? Yeah, a hustler, you know. Look, I didn't want any part of him. at the pool table said that you killed him. Well, he's wrong, Mike. I know what it looked like, but he's wrong. Sure, I'm sure. What's to miss? There were six, eight people out there. Most of them were looking right at these two. Why was that? They were arguing. The dead guy was grabbing the other guy's jacket, asking him for something. What? 
Who knows? Money. Now, wait a minute. Are you guessing, or did he say money? Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's hang in with what we know, all right? What happened then? Well, the, the truck came looping down in Bacadero and zap. Zap. Yeah, he shoved the other guy right into that truck. You saw that? I was standing right next to him. I'm not asking that. I'm saying you saw him shove the other man into the street. Yeah. The uh, truck was trying to miss some little car. He hit his air horn and ripped right around the corner. Did you hear the air horn before or after the man went into the street? Um, before. Before? Then you were looking at the truck. Yeah, sure. So you weren't actually watching the two men all the time? Well, maybe not every second. This McPhee that he was afraid of, is that Mickey McPhee? Yeah. He's inside, but he's still operating. Got big connections. He could have bought somebody to hit Shaco, I guess. But at least Shaco was sure he did. Yeah. Okay, now... This guy that you say you saw come back in here, how big again? Big. Six foot, six foot one, corduroy sport jacket, rust-colored, dark slacks, brown maybe. I can't say for sure. Tie? I told you, Mike, I only saw him from... Are you testing me, Mike? Do I have to? I'm sorry. I'll get on it. Uh, you want me to call Irene? No. She should know. Mike, please, not this. She doesn't need this. What are the odds of finding a guy I can't even describe? You leave the odds to me. Okay, if I want to ask you any more questions, I can get you this number here. Right. Now, hold it a minute. Son, there was a guy outside at the bus stop, about 661. Came in here just ahead of the uh, suspect. Did you see him? I only saw the guy you were talking to. I, I saw him do it, and I saw him try to run. Yeah, but he says he ran in here after that big guy. He's wearing a rust-colored jacket, corduroy, maybe. Brown slacks. Son, are you sure you didn't see him do it? No way. There was just the two of them. And they argued, just like I said, and then he uh, shoved the other guy and tried to run. All right. Look, if you happen to think of anything later, give me a call, will you? Uh, sure. Is that all? That's all. Thank you. What did Jepson say? He didn't do it. Now, is that you talking or him? I believe him. Well, I just might, too. That witness couldn't possibly have seen Jepson push Shaco. Right. His eyes. They were on the truck when he heard the air horn. Good work. Now, who is this guy you're talking about, this big man? Is that for real? Well, he better be. I'm going to ask around. Wait a minute. You got a plane to catch, you remember? I got a job to do. Oh, come on, Mike. You're not blowing another $100 deposit. I can take this. Buddy boy, we're talking about somebody's life. I'll go out and see if I can find the big guy, and well, you hit the streets and see what you can pick up on Herb Shaco. some china doll while I'm staring at last month's centerfold. Well, now that's a problem I can't help you with. I like your style, LeBeau. I really do. 
Send me a snapshot, at least. But who did you know in queue that was 6'1", 160 pounds, about 40 years old, sandy hair, blue eyes, and he had a scar over his right eye, and it drooped a little? The son? No. But enough people did to give me a picture. Now, the bartender said that he came in right after Shaco, hung around, played the pinball machine. Well, then you can get me out. No, I can't. I need more than that. I need the man. I don't know, Mike. I... Well, think. Think, think. I can't remember anybody with a scar like that. I can't, Mike. I can't. Okay. Okay, okay. Maybe McPhee can. Are you going up there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, this might take a little time. You want me to have Irene come over? Mike, we've been through that. You owe it to her. She played it straight for three years waiting for you. What'd she put those three years in? She come back down here and see me right back in the tank? Every time I turn around, it's, it's right back down the tube. I mean, what is it, Mike? What makes me a loser? Thinking like one. Now, you hang in there. You hang loose. We'll get the guy. Don't worry. Ticket for me, LeBeau. Oh, yes, Mr. LeBeau. We were afraid you weren't going to make it. You know, we sail at six o'clock. We? Just a figure of speech, Mr. LeBeau. Now, that's too bad. <laughs> Jim Pritchard from HRD is up in records now, Lieutenant. Said to tell you they've been digging ever since you called. Still haven't come up with anybody fitting your description they could tie to McPhee in South Block. Well, how about saying McPhee? It's all right. He's in the machine shop. I can take you over.
<laughs> no, no, no. You gotta be kidding. Is that what you came up here for, Lieutenant? To arrest me? Well, the people I talked to outside said you tangled with Shaker when he was up here. You swore you'd get him. Ever have your skull laid open with a wrench? You say a lot of crazy things. You in the infirmary for three months. You tried to have him hit twice in the yard, once in the mess hall. You were the one that spread the word Shaco could run, but he couldn't hide. You get around. What do you know about it, McPhee? Just what you told me, Lieutenant. Herbie Shaco didn't know enough to use a crosswalk. Is that really what brought you guys up here? What brought us up here was Bobby Jepson. Jepson? Little clean jeans. How's he wrapped up with Shaco? He stands to take the jolt. Oh. We see it as a setup. How's the DA gonna see it? I went to Shaco's apartment, found five hollow point 3030 30 slugs in the plaster. They went through his window about six o'clock this morning. Hmm. That's just when Bobby was walking out of here. I see. But then he was walking the streets with Shaco when it happened. Is that it? I'm gonna give it to you straight, you see? And I want it back the same way. Bobby Jepson's a good kid. He doesn't belong in here. And I can keep him out if I can find that guy who shoved Shaco. Who's that? That's what I want from you. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You're telling me you think I put out a contract, and now you want to know who I bought? I mean, do you really think if that's what I did, I'd be dumb enough to tell you? No. Now, we think you'd be smart enough to help us if the information we got was wrong. Sure, sure. Anything I can do. I mean, I really owe the law a lot. Right? Pritchard, you've got to come up with something. We've been back all the way, Lieutenant. McPhee's whole stretch. Well, did you check everybody that's in and out of here? Past three years. Three years? Wait a minute. We're talking about six for McPhee, right? Right. Not here. Sure. If the tax men put him in, that would have been minimum security. Where was he before? Have to look. What's with the tax men? I thought he was a real public enemy. He was, but clever. They finally nailed him on tax evasion. Here we are. He drew Chino. We got lucky three years ago. Why was that? He's a born organizer. He had Chino wired for just about every kind of activity you can think of. Some of it got a little rough. Then he did, too. They send him to us to straighten him out. <laughs> How do you unkink a corkscrew? So if our man didn't know McPhee here... Then he could have known him in Chino. Right. How much time will it take to comb those records? Time? No problem. At Rudolph's, we don't worry about the clock. We worry about the customer. You know, I need it by five. Then you'll have it by five. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. Bobby, why didn't you tell me you were getting out today? I was gonna knock on the door with a dozen roses in one hand and a job card in the other. But here we are. Just like every weekend for the past 27 months. Mike Stone said that it was a mistake. Did he tell you it's a mistake that started in a bar? Because I fumbled three straight interviews. I couldn't handle the right kind of truck. I couldn't handle a crummy typing test. I couldn't handle being out. Don't, Bobby. Don't put yourself down like that. Bobby. You never got to be college All-American, OK? And you're not a, a doctor or a lawyer, or a banker, or a teacher. You're just a guy, like a lot of other guys, who live a life without headlines. Who find something that they do well and, and make their own way. Make a good home for their families. That's all you have to be. That's all I ever wanted. No, Irene. 
I'll tell you what I am. I just had it laid out on a booking slip what I am. Convicted felon. I've got the record and the social contacts to prove it. Guys like, like Herb Shaco, who can walk up to me on any street corner at any time and drag me right back into the gutter with him. And that's not where I want you. What do you mean? What I said three years ago. Go see a lawyer. <sighs> Haven't I proved anything to you in all this time? Irene, this charge means a life sentence. Even with parole, I'm talking about 12, 15 years. But they haven't proved anything yet. Irene, they've got a guy who's going to walk into that courtroom in a suit and tie and tell them that he saw a convict already doing time for manslaughter shove another con under a truck. Now, what are the solid citizens of San Francisco going to think about that, hmm? I mean, what chance do I have? Well, you've got Mike Stone. And, if it matters, me. I was afraid the time pressure might get to Jepson. He felt he had so much to prove. But you see, the work for a little program. Oh, I like the program. I just don't like putting a, a time lock on any man's chance for freedom. When we tell somebody that it all hangs on their going out and getting a job, well, I think they ought to have more than one shot at it. Not have to feel that it's all over if they blow one lousy chance. I, I'm sorry. You know, I like this kid. I care for him. He had a shot at something once that a lot of us dreamed about. Hmm. You put a ball in this boy's hands, forget it. He was off. Nobody could stop him. You never told me what happened. He get hurt? North-South All-Star Game, Coliseum in L.A. I flew down to see it. Clean play. But you could hear that leg snap all the way up to the 65th row. Broke his spirit, too, huh? Completely. All those good moves on the field and just like that, over. Nothing. Nothing but bad ones off the field. But, you know, I... I certainly appreciate you coming in on this. Records, Jensen. Right. What have you got? Three years ago, July, could be our man. Are you sure about that scar? You have the time to McPhee. Good. Right eye. Now, look, can you time to a Michael R. McPhee? Yeah, Mickey. He's checking. But the make you gave me squares with a the guy they paroled three years ago. Puts him in your time period. What's his name? LeBeau. Daryl LeBeau. How do you spell that last name? Wait a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Same work detail. Two years. That's our man. Can you give me a spelling? Yeah, go ahead. Parole and community services, please. Yeah. Right, got it. Thanks. Okay, you fellas take it easy down there. Supervisor's office. Art Flynn. Art, Mike Stone. I'm fine, thanks. Listen, I need some information about a fellow sent to you from Chino about three years ago. Around July. Name is LeBeau. Daryl LeBeau. That's L-E... Capital B-E-A-U. L-E, capital B-E-A-U. First name is Daryl. D-A-R-R-Y-L. Thanks, I'll hold on. Say, what chance is there for you to come to the city? Very possible. Well, uh, I'd like for you to tell Bobby that we're on to something. He'll need it about now. Sure. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Oh, his parole is up? Well, uh, what's the last known address you have on him? Pier 35, swing downtown first to Rudolph's Men's Store, Pope in California.
you do me a favor? Could you see if McPhee had any other visitors today? Sure, just one second. Yeah, guy named LeBeau, Daryl LeBeau. What time was that? Uh, 1.12. Hold on to that. I'll be back with a warrant. Good thinking, buddy boy. <laughs> dear Heavenly Father, for all of thy blessings. In his holy name we pray. I'll get it. In a moment. Amen. It's the plumbing, I know it. Probably in number six. Come in, please. Yes, sir. Police. You have a tenant in number eight, LeBeau. He doesn't seem to answer. I wonder if you could tell us where he is. Is there some kind of trouble? We'd like to ask him a few questions. I'm afraid I can't help you. Why is that? He's gone. Well, where? He sent a trip. Had the utilities turned off and everything. When was this? Just a while ago. 40, 45 minutes, maybe. Well, do you have any idea where we can get in touch with him or where he was going? No. He's a very quiet man. Keeps to himself. Well, did you happen to see him leave? No. The big man? Yes, yes, son, the big man. Yes, when I was playing outside. Did you see him leave in his car? He didn't get in a car. He got in a taxi cab. What color? Orange. Orange, that's uh, C&W cabs 555-3323. I'll radio for a search warrant. Right. Uh, oh, may I use your phone, please? Certainly. Uh, please forgive me. Dispatch, please. This is Mike Stone, San Francisco Police. You picked up a fare at 2207 Taylor about 45 minutes ago. I'd like the destination. I thought I said no reunions. Hey, what are you doing here? Mike Stone told me about everything, including the guy you saw run off. He's checking him out right now. Who is he? Name's Daryl LeBeau. I don't know him. He knows McPhee. Well, then I'm clear. Not until Mike wraps it. That could be never. And it seems like he's gotten more confidence in you than you've gotten him. I just meant that. Yeah, I know. There's one more problem. What's that? I just checked with my office, and I got a message that the board knows about this whole thing. They're trying to get a hold of me. They want to pull the plug. Well, what do we do? Well, I could stop picking up my messages, and you could start having more faith in Mike Stone. Attention all units. Vicinity of Embargadero, Pier 33. Code 3, now in effect. Please assist. Unit 8-1, closing in on Pier 3-3. How about that liner? Talk to the captain yet? The main office has been contacted, Lieutenant. They're trying to get word through now. Well, stay on it. I don't want that ship to leave the dock.
Cold shower after a hard workout. But what are you laughing about? What? What? The time you got. What are you worried about the time? Oh, but what are you laughing about? You blew another hundred dollar deposit to Hawaii. Oh, maybe next year. Yeah, yeah. Get your coat. Sure. Pick up your shoes. I got my shoes. <laughs> Niners and six. Six? Yeah. Oh, come on. Dallas hasn't given up six points the last three games. Well, the Brody on target, no sweat. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's true. You're one of your boys, huh? Yeah, you bet your cheap watch it's one of my boys. <laughs> How long has he been up there? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes? That's a long time. Maybe I ought to go up. I think your phone call was enough, Mike. He can handle it. What happened? Come on, come on, what happened? You know, we scored, gang. <laughs> hey, Bobby, way to go. Hey, buddy. Well, I guess I can call my office now. <laughs> Look, thanks, man. Thanks for everything. Coach. <laughs> uh, say, uh, we gotta get rolling. You wanna, you wanna lift? Thanks, but uh, they're gonna check me out on the routine. I think I'll just hang in here too. Thanks a lot. And that's one of your boys I gotta go along with. But the 49ers this year add something else. Listen, you gonna give me Dallas and six points? Yes. I gotta take that. You got it. <laughs> could have had twelve. <laughs> you you could have. <laughs> San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas.
with guest stars John Saxon, Belinda J. Montgomery, Harry Rhodes. Special guest star, Joseph Cotton. Tonight's episode, A Collection of Eagles. There we are, 40 units. It's him? Maybe. How go, Fiance? Vince? Ernie. Ernie, good to hear your voice. Listen, did you get them? Yeah, the whole lot. Beautiful. Uh, where are you? Uh, just off the Embarcadero. 7 Front Street, room 25. Oh, there's a rear entrance. Uh, did you have any trouble? <laughs> Not a hitch. I smell like a ship's bilge, and I gotta wash off half of Mexico. Well, look, uh, uh, there's no rush. Uh, take a good long bath and get a good night's sleep. You've earned it, and uh, we'll see each other tomorrow. Sure. Uh, maybe it's better anyway. Um, I'm beat. See you tomorrow, then. He's got them, Tommy. Enough to buy us the world. Tommy, where are you going? You're insulin. This is no time to be falling on your face. Since I don't know whether I can do it. You'll do it, Tommy. Just like we planned. You'll do it for the money and for me.
Ashes to ashes. Yeah. What do you think, Doc? Another cigarette in bed? It's hard to say yet. He was pretty well done. Well, I'll get the arson detail in here and see what they can turn up. How long for the autopsy report? I'll get on it right away. Hiya, Doc. Hi, Steve. Mike, we got a John Doe. Manager said the night clerk didn't register anybody for this room. Well, a fin or a saw buck under the table. That's one way to beat the room tax. Yeah. Did you get the uh, clerk's name and address? Radio unit's on his way to pick him up. Uh, well, maybe we got something. Yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty black. The numbers look good. Well, put your young eyes on that. Nothing. Nothing, eh? Yeah. Now, poke around on there some more. Thanks. Hmm. You know, a guy with a gun who doesn't register in a flea bag like this, you know something's fishy. Mike. Yeah. Take a look at this. Looks like one of those uh, gold luck charms or something. Gold? Maybe. Luck charm? I don't think so. some interest after all. Mr. James, you startled me. <laughs> In this contraption, I sometimes feel like a mechanical satyr. Body of a man and legs of a champion. What is it? What? You're troubled. No, I'm just tired, I guess. I worked late last night typing up the notes. The university should have warned you I'm a slave driver. Well, the last person to leave the project did say something to that effect. Oh, that was a big mistake all around. A man can't dictate an autobiography to an insensitive soul. Uh, what about you? Any complaints? Oh, no. The room you gave me is just lovely. The pay is fine, and the company is very stimulating. Oh, thank you. Tell me the truth. Now, when I came in a moment ago, you were thinking, I'm an eccentric old man who hoards his gold coins like a modern-day Midas, weren't you? No, not really. I was just thinking they must be very valuable. Well, in round figures, half a million dollars. I had no idea. Would you like to hear how I came to collect them? Uh... No, I think we should uh, finish what we left off with yesterday. Um, what do you remember about your 1927 trip to New Zealand? You are a very odd young woman. The first one I ever met who was more interested in my memory than my money. Well, people already know about the John R. James fortune, and I want the book to be about the man. Thank you. Let's go on the terrace, shall we? All right. say nothing yet is that thing worth anything Charlie mm -hmm. specific gravity gold slightly less than 22 carats 900,000 is fine weight exactly 516 grains all of which means all of which means it's a planchette a what a planchette it's a metal disc that's ready to be stamped into a coin right Right. I use it in crossword puzzles a lot. 
You got time to do crossword puzzles? I don't give you enough to do around here, huh? Say, um, what kind of a coin does this thing make? Well, I got some books over here to tell you for sure. That one to me looks like a double eagle size. Double eagle, that's a $20 gold piece, isn't it? Hey, chuck one up for the old folks. You like words, huh? Yeah. Read them to me. See you, Charlie. Well, there's 464 grains of pure gold in the planchette. And how many grains in an ounce? Uh, 450, isn't it? No, I think it's 480. Ah, 450. 480. 480? Yeah. Well, they must have changed it since my high school physics course. <laughs> they must have. <sighs> Look, um, no, let's not read for a minute, huh? Now, the night clerk said that the victim came in with a satchel. Right. We don't find a satchel. But we do get this uh, little goody here. Which ye old book here says is illegal in the U.S. except as coins held by collectors. And which could have been in that closet for years where they clean out those waterfront dives. Possible, yeah. I think we're spinning our wheels. Close to an ounce of gold. Worth about, oh, about 65 or 70 bucks on the international market. I think it's about that. Stone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right there. Looks like maybe we got something. What? Coroner said murder. Tommy. Here? He's busy right now. Is there anything I can do to help? Karen. Hi. You're early. I missed you. Come, let's take a walk. in to help out a little. He doesn't know anything about what's going on, no, does he? No, he barely knows enough about coin stands and the questions that come in off the street. Did you bring the diagram? Yes. Are you sure you have each coin in the exact place he keeps it? Yes. Vince, I'm frightened. Of what? I don't know. Doing anything like this. Getting caught or hurting that old man. We're just going to trade one set of coins for another set of coins, and nobody's going to get hurt. Do you want to see something? What is it? Our ticket to Spain, Angel, the Costa del Sol. It's how we feel about each other that counts. And having the money to do whatever we want to do together and go wherever we want to go. You really do mean it, don't you? What you said. Maybe. And the last thing in the world I wanted to do the day I found you was to make a delivery to that mausoleum. Bang, there you were. You're the best trip I've ever had. And Mr. James, Will you should... stop worrying about that old man? He owns half of Knob Hill. He's not going to miss what's in that case. He told me this morning it was worth about half a million dollars. Angel, you've seen it sitting there yourself. Now, what good is it doing anybody? It's not like robbing a bank or someone's business. Hey, I've watched people like that all my life. I watched while my father pandered to them. I swept up a crummy shop while they walked out with more than he made all year, sealed in one lousy little bit of plastic. What do they do with it? Take it home and put it in a glass case. Well, fine. Let John or James sit and stare at his eagles. I want to see the world.
It's homicide, no question. There wasn't a trace of smoke in the victim's lungs. Well, that means the victim was dead before the fire started, eh? Yeah. Couldn't be a stroke or a heart attack. Not from my findings. Considering there were no breaks, welts, or contusions on the body, I'd make it suffocation. Suffocation, huh? This envelope shows there was a struggle. Bits of human flesh and hair from under the victim's fingernails. Let's get it under the microscope. There's uh, no chance of making an ID on the victim, huh? Sorry. Later, okay? Thanks, yeah. Harry. Buddy boy. What does a short barrel 32 with the serial numbers filed off say to you? Pro, high status, maybe. And one planchette out of a satchel full, ripped off by whoever killed him? Well, a couple hundred would be worth 10, maybe 15,000, but you'd have to have the right contacts to unload them. Wouldn't be worth all that time and trouble, though, would it? No. What about the night clerk? Oh, no, nickels and dimes. This one's got to be worth more than nickels and dimes. Yeah, Tommy, here's $15,000. If it were good, but it's not. I blew that one. You see those scratches? Those little things? Those little things are called cast marks. When they're that bad, you could tell an expert that it's a phony real fast. Speaking of scratches, how about those that Ernie laid on you? They're okay. I guess they found me by now. Relax. I'll never be able to tell what they found. That's a strand of blonde human hair. Came from the same place the coroner found those flecks of skin on slide number two. Is it body, hair, or face? Body, and probably his arms. And he's between the age of 20 and 40, definitely male and Caucasian. Well, that lets you and me out, Charlie. How about you, buddy boy? You willing to roll up your sleeves? Want to try to raise a few numbers? Chicken, huh? <laughs> Charlie. Mm -hmm. What do you got on this third slide? Shards of rusted metal. I found them embedded in the soles of the victim's shoes. Any guesses? I'll have a better picture when I finish evaporating the solution. We washed what was left of the victim's clothing and shoes. That's what we got. A rust powder in solution. Electromagnet. You want to know something? What? I've been here for 25 years. I've never seen this thing work. Well, a serial number stamped in metal can be filed off. but can never be completely destroyed. Yeah, I know that. The molecular structure of the metal retains a ghost of the stamped number. Let's see it work. Right. Serial number H12987. All PD's urgent. I'm on my way. What do you know? It really works, huh? Mm -hmm. Now you see it. Now you don't. Magic, eh? Well, maybe we'll get something after all. Say, where's that, um, oh, the latent print kit? Uh, oh. <laughs> You're gonna need a ten-point match for positive ID. You really think there's a chance? Charlie, I'm gonna let you in a little secret. I always think there's a chance. A few more tonight, a few more in the morning. Vince, who are you calling? Karen. Vince? I told you, it was just business. I killed a man, Vince! Now, look, that had to be done. Just like my seeing Karen. Now, it won't be long now. Go inside and get some more glass in cases and we'll seal these up. Go ahead. Miss B. 
McPherson. Telephone. Thank you. Hello? Working hard. Oh, I was afraid you weren't going to call. Oh, big call tonight. I'll be finished in the morning. Tomorrow? I'll tell you what time. Well, I gotta go now. Love you, baby. I love you, too. I... Well, 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 what? Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, magnesium bromide. Well, thank you, Dr. Einstein. Well, the primary salts in seawater. From the victim's clothes. The residue evaporated from the solution we got when we washed them. Well, this came from the shoes. It's a lead compound identical to what they use in marine paint. A ship. Just off it, too, if he hadn't changed his clothes. Everybody wants to be a detective. San Diego made the serial numbers in the 32. Stolen three weeks ago in National City. Prince taken to the scene of theft identified as an Ernie Walker, a.k.a. Ernie Willard. Priors all for robbery, huh? I want Walker's jacket. I want his mug shots, I want his prints, I want everything I want him right now. I've already asked for it. It's on its way. Good. Well? We may have our dead man. Now we got to find the man who killed him. They're pretty, aren't they? Is it the one on the bottom? The fourth one, right? Yeah. What's the date? 1907. Uh-huh. Does that look any different from the rest? They all look the same to me. Well, that one's worth $22,500, Tommy. Real rare piece of change. We're going to be rich, huh, Vince? Yeah. Vince? The insulin. How many units was that? Um, how many units? About 80, I think. Maybe a little more. No, it's supposed to be 40. Right. Yes, that's too much. Vance? Vance? Sorry, Tommy. Just business. most beautiful in the morning, coming awake, alive. Oh, oh don't do that. It's taken nearly 10 years to perfect this hybrid. Sorry. It's all right. You couldn't have known. I believe if I cross this with that dark red over there, I'll have the most beautiful rose ever created. A deep, deep red with just a tinge of yellow in the throat, the look of velvet. A true queen, like no other on earth ever before her. <laughs> I, I must sound like a jelly-minded old fool. <laughs> no, no, not at all. They mean even more to you than the eagles, don't they? Well, the eagles belong to someone else now. These will always be mine. What do you mean? Nothing. Uh... That food 
so good, I always eat too much. Yeah. Yo, yeah, how much do I owe you? Forget it. What do you mean, forget it? Somebody give you a raise in salary that I didn't offer? You forget authorize? it. You don't owe me anything. Okay, thanks, big shot. You're welcome. <laughs> you like talking, or you still think? Oh, I'm sorry, butter boy. You know that partial that we lifted from the 32? That proves that this walker is the guy that we pried from that hotel room, right? Right. He did two years in Nevada for grand theft, completed his parole right here in this city. His last address was San, San Diego. Diego. Right. Well, is that all supposed to add up to something? Just that he's a thief who lived here. The last time he was known to be alive was in San Diego, which is as close to Mexico as you can get. Mexico? Mm-hmm. And that's a big, big gold producer, right? Skipped across the border, picked up a satchel full of these, surfaced here. And he was on a ship. We didn't buy a ticket. Stowed away on a freighter. A bribe, a nice, cozy berth in steerage. <laughs> you know, it's true. What is? What you always say. You work long enough as a cop, you start thinking like a crook. Then you must know what else I'm thinking, huh, buddy boy? A counterfeit operation. That's right. But if you're dealing in counterfeit coins, especially gold coins, it's a very special market. A collector's market. Right, and those guys can tell a phony. Or buy from a dealer who can. Yeah. We're gonna need an expert. I'll tell you what, I'll call a numismatic society and get us one. The what? The numismatic society. Numis... I know. I know. Coin collectors. Very good. I worked a few crossword <laughs> puzzles myself, you know, buddy boy. <laughs> Unit 8-1. Unit 8-1. 902 to crime lab. Unit 8 1, 10 4. What have you got? Mm, I thought you might want to look at these. Who is it? Paris and I are working on it now. Body washed up by Hunter's Point this morning, probably in a bay all night. Johnson saw the pictures, thought of my tie. Blonde. Oh, age is what, between 20 and 30? This our killer? I've got a work up in progress now. You got any ID? Negative. Even the labels were stripped from the clothing. What killed him? The coroner says an insulin OD. Did you get a set of prints? In the works. Let me know when you get a make. Right. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, uh, maybe you're in the wrong department after all. Listen to me. I know how you feel, but there's nothing to worry about. Nothing can go wrong, and no one will be hurt if you do as I told you. Vince, please, do you have to do it? Yes, we have to do it. You and I together, and then we can be together always in style, the way we planned. Look, I don't care about the money, all right? All I want is... Well, I do care about money, Karen. I care very much. I care enough to have this whole thing set up right now, and I'm counting on you. You have that case open. I'll be there at nine. Yes. Yes, yes, this is Hagopians. Well, I suppose so, but can I ask what this is about? Okay, um, okay, I'll be there shortly. And the basic design was changed twice after 1849. These changes were made oh, in 1866 and 1907. Between 1907 right. and 1933, 57 issues were minted. Terrific. Wonderful. Only 206 possibilities. 206, huh? You know, if I was going to counterfeit coins, I'd go for the rarest issues. Now, here's one. 
1907. Check that out. Twenty-two thousand dollars? Twenty-two five, and that was eleven years ago. For one coin, I gotta get into this. It's That's another world. <laughs> yeah. Yes, come in. Lieutenant Stone? Yeah, what can we do for you? Well, I believe it's the other way around. You telephoned me for some kind of assistance. I'm Vincent Hagopi. Oh, excuse me, I called you. I'm Inspector Keller. How do you do? This is Lieutenant Stone. Lieutenant. Yes, how do you do? Well, hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Not at all. We appreciate your coming. Why don't you sit down? You want some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Ah. I was told your shop deals with a lot of collectors of the double eagle. Well, yes, we dealt quite a lot with them in the past, but not so much anymore. They've got too expensive. Yeah, yeah we were just looking at some of these prices. Incredible. <laughs> So one coin here, twenty-two thousand five hundred. May I see it? Sure. Oh yes, Sando Dense type. It's extra high relief. It's sold for twenty-two thousand five hundred in Chicago, nineteen sixty-three, I believe. But I take it you gentlemen have some special interest in eagles. Well, we have reason to believe that we're looking for a counterfeiter. Counterfeit eagles? Well, that sounds like a very complicated operation for a very limited market. I mean, I don't see how anyone could expect to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Well, that's why we wanted to talk to you. You see, we'd uh, like to have a list of names of all the collectors in the city. Yes, sir. It'll take a little while. Well, we think the counterfeiter has about 100 of those planchettes, and he's had them for about uh, 36 hours. Now, would it be possible for him to have stamped all the coins by now? Yes, I suppose so, provided he had the uh, die and the press already available. Well, that could mean he's ready to make his move. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Uh, what exactly did you mean by his move? Well, you just said that it would be almost impossible to pass them through a dealer without being discovered. Yes. But how many collectors stop to look for minor imperfections once they've owned that rare coin for several years? I see. You mean a switch. Transferring the, uh, the counterfeit coins for the authenticated ones and then selling those somewhere else where there's no risk of detection. Sounds possible to me. How about you? <laughs> Sounds ingenious and terribly important for someone in my field to help you to stop. Uh, but, Lieutenant, you'd want more than the uh, names of collectors. You'd want a list of all the issues that would be uh, most likely passed. You see, they'd have to be either proof or uncirculated to command any kind of price. Well, what about this uh, 1907 coin, for example? Oh, no, I'd rule that out. That's too rare. Well, can you give us issues that you can't rule out? Yes, be quite a lot. And about the uh, collectors, I'd have to check my records in my shop to compile that list. Well, we'd appreciate anything you gave us, Mr. Hagopian. Would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Good day. could take us two days just to put the right coins with the collectors that Gopian gave us. Yeah, he helped a lot. Yeah. Hmm. What do you know? What? Remember that coin that the Gopian said was too rare, the one that went for 22 Gs? Yeah. Take a look who bought it. John R. James, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And if he owns that one, he owns others. Well, I remember his name on that list. Because it's not on there. Well, how could he forget a name like that? You know, I think that's worth asking Mr. Hagopian himself. a duty as I have burdened you with over the months, it seems. Go ahead. You said this morning that um, these don't belong to you anymore. Have you agreed to sell them to someone? What I said this morning is not for publication. What I'm going to tell you now is. This coin was minted in 1907. It's the most expensive double eagle ever on the market. I paid an exorbitant price, I know, but it had a sentimental value. You see, my Uncle Henry actually started this collection for me 
with an identical coin on my seventh birthday. You began collecting these when you were seven years old? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. I sold it to buy a train ticket. This was my start, you might say, and when I made it in the world, I determined to buy it back again someday. Well, why the rest? I became enamored of these in my search for this. For instance... Mr. James, I'd much rather think of you with the roses than with all of these. <laughs> Lock it out. This may become a mellow evening after all. <laughs> All set? Yes. Let's break out the brandy. Or not, we ever finished that book I brought you here to write. I've enjoyed your company, Karen. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for being more than just somebody an old man can babble on to about his yesterdays. And for being someone who understands just why and how he spent them the way he did. I think you probably understand everything about me except my eagles, even after hearing how I came to collect them. Well, it isn't important that I understand that. Well, it isn't important I keep the future from you either, provided it remains off the record. Of course. I've said they already belong to someone else. That's true. A trust owns them all, has for several years. When I die, they'll be sold at auction. The proceeds will go to the English department at the university. That's how we met, actually. Dean Robertson told me I wouldn't be disappointed in you in any respect. That's proved to be true, too. I'm glad you feel that way. Remember this morning, when I told you the roses were different? They had always belonged to me. Yes. Well, that was some sort of a fantasy, I suppose, an old man's idea of immortality. I could see my creation, my queen rose, carrying on my name long after I was gone. They deserve something much better. They deserve to be named after a beautiful woman. I'd like very much to name that rose after you, with your permission. What do you say? Shall it be Queen Karen? Sorry to be intruding, but we'd like to speak to Mr. James, please. Mr. James isn't to be disturbed. Isabel, what is it? Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. We're with Homicide. We'd like to talk to you about your collection of double eagles. I failed to make any connection between my eagles and Homicide. Well, if you gave us a few moments, I'm sure we could make that connection for you. Very well. gentlemen. There they are. 
Now, that's all of them, right? Yes, Inspector, that is all of them. Forty, to be exact, with an average value of over $12,000. Mr. James, did you know a dealer in this city by the name of Vincent Hagopian? Very well. I used to deal with him exclusively before he died. Died? About a year and a half ago. Well, we just talked to him this afternoon. His son had to be his son. Would be. He took over the business, but he's not the expert his father was. He hasn't the same love for it. He didn't mention that either. Maybe we ought to find out what else he forgot to mention. Say, may I use your phone? Certainly. Thank you. You still haven't explained why you're here. We're looking for counterfeits, Mr. James. <laughs> Counterfeit eagles here? Impossible. Who has access to your case? There's only one key. I keep it with me at all times. Yeah. Stone. Let me talk to Lessing. Lessing Stone. I want to make on Vincent Hagopian Jr. He owns a coin shop on Maiden Lane. Now, his name and address is on my desk. Go over there and pick it up. Gloves. I'll hold. Desk left drawer. You got it. Go over to R&I and find out if by any chance there's a tie between this Hagopian and our other body, Ernie Walker. Body? What's he talking about? Well, we've had two killings we believe are connected with this counterfeiting. Did you get a make on that insulin OD yet? All right. Check Hagopian's neighborhood and find out if the two of them were ever seen together. Anywhere. Now, you know where to look. The bars, his coin shop, apartment. Let me know what turns up. When was the last time you opened this, sir? Less than a half an hour ago. And were you alone? No, I was with a friend, a young lady. She's my house guest. May we speak to her, please? That way. Thank you. Got anything? I don't know. Mr. James. This coin. It's an 83 proof. Uh, only uh, 40 in the world. Could you look at it through the glass? taken sort of a two-day crash course because of this case, but those uh, hairline scratches, I believe you experts call them cast marks, they wouldn't be on a coin in proof condition, would they? No. They weren't here when I bought this coin. You didn't buy that coin, Mr. James. Somebody just gave it to you. A gopian? I don't know. Yes, sir. Will you ask Miss Pearson to join us, please? Well, Miss Pearson just left, sir. I heard her car in the driveway. Say, this girl, does she know Hagopian? Not well. But she did know him. Yes, as a matter of fact, I introduced them myself several months ago when he came here one day to make a delivery. Have they seen each other since then? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Certainly she couldn't be involved in anything like this. She's a very simple young woman. And if I read this Hagopian right, he's no simple young man. We'll need a description of Miss Pearson, sir. What's her first name? Karen. Vince. Vince, open the door. Vince. What are you doing here? I told you to wait for me. The police came. The police? Yeah, we were wrong. Look, we've got to take it back. Never I mind, never mind. What did they want? What did they say? I don't know. I left as soon as they came. Help me. Let me get these mail. Then stop. Look, we have to take it back, all of it. It doesn't belong to him anymore. I know it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to me, and they'll be waiting for me in Spain. Oh, please. Look, I'll make it up. We don't need this. I'll tell you what I don't need. I don't need you. Your whining mouth or your pawing me anymore.
How long do you think she'll get? Who? Who? Karen. Well, I'm a DA. She turned evidence. Identified Tom from the Gopian shop. That'll help her a little. What's this? Got your names on them. In appreciation, John R. James. Silver dollar. Where's that book? Where's the book? Yeah. What year is that? 1882. Looks pretty shiny, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You think they're uncirculated? Oh, I'd say they're uncirculated. Hey, we're rich. Yeah? Yeah. Four dollars a piece. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Joe Don Baker, Darlene Carr, Ken Swafford. Tonight's episode, Beyond Vengeance. on what he wants. Well, he better want me. He seems to. Yeah, but he's into so many things. I mean, there really isn't any time, you know? There isn't enough time to be sure. Well, why don't you get a place together next semester? Well, listen to the femme. And what would your father do if you made that scene? Mike? Oh, he'd be cool about it. Once I convinced him it was more than just a sex thing. And how would you do that? Talk. He listens? Sure. When he's through shouting. <sighs> well, I don't know. That doesn't sound much like the father that drives all the way across the bay to meet a bus in Oakland just so he can spend an extra half hour with his daughter. Well, that's different. How? That's love.
Come on, let us take you home from here. No, no, you go ahead. I can use the extra time to think. I might not have much when I get with the mom. Not after I lay it all on her, anyway. Okay. But listen, if she's not there, or if she is and it gets to be a hassle or anything, just give us a call. There'll be plenty of tuna casserole. <laughs> Thanks. Take a look at you, sweetheart. I sometimes I forget how lucky I am. Oh, hold your praise, kind sir. I think I blew a couple of finals. Well, a couple of finals I'm not going to worry about. But if you had ended up looking like me instead of like your mother, we would have had big problems, wouldn't we? Huh? <laughs> what about your roommate? Isn't she coming? Oh, she had some things she wanted to work out. Wanted to be alone before she got home. Pick a place we're going to put on the feedback tonight. Super. Listen, I heard about this little spot up on Petraro Hill. Specializes in home cooking. No, sir. Uh. This is something special. Get in. We're going to celebrate tonight. Now, you said pick. I picked. <laughs> Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. And I told Val that we'd wait for her to call in case she wants to join us. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Main Depot, miss. San Francisco. Wake up, miss. End of the line. Stop snooping around now. Come on. Wait a minute. You said something about wine. In the refrigerator. Chilled, huh? Must be white. White must be fish or fowl. Everybody in this family's got to be a detective. Scampy? Will you take the wine and get out? Lobster Thermidor. King Crab de Glare? Oh, sure, I'm going to compete with the best restaurants on the wharf. When was the last time you had anything but tuna casserole around here? Yeah, well, when was the last time the chef got a complaint, huh? Riesling, perfect. And chilled glasses. This third one for Val? Mm-hmm, I thought she was coming. Well, she didn't call. I guess everything's all right. Send me the prints as soon as possible, will you? Anybody know who she is? Name's Valerie Mercer. Lives three blocks from here. Born February 10th, 1954. Aquarian. All right, let's get her downtown, have Prince take it on the knife. What do you figure? Somebody held her from behind and planted that in her side from back there? I don't know, maybe. Nobody saw this? Nobody we can find. Well, what about the driver? He's in the lounge. His name's Ledeker. Herman Ledeker. I don't know. I had, uh, you know, about half a load uh, pulling out of Phoenix, I guess. Uh, 
I think she's with me for most of the haul, but you know, I couldn't swear to it. You know. Was she alone? No. Uh, there was another girl. Did they get on together? Yeah. yeah I, you, you know, I think so. I couldn't swear to that either. They, uh, they were together later, uh, safe from, uh, fr from needles on. So they uh, probably got on together. My God, she's just a kid. Did you see this girl get off? Yeah. Yeah, in Oakland. Now, I remember that for sure because she uh, thanked me. Seemed like a, you know, a real nice kid. Did you notice Miss Mercer after the girl got off? No, oh, you know, you, you drive these big bruisers. You just keep your eye on the road, not who's riding with you. Yeah. How many passengers did you have when you arrived here? Oh, six, seven tops. Did you catch any names, faces, anything? Yeah, you know, uh, this ain't no champagne flight with reservations. Uh, people get on, you see hands and tickets. Uh, they get off, you see backsides. Yeah. So the only other passenger remembers is this other girl, right? Yeah. Uh, you want to give me a description of her, please? Well, she uh, didn't look like no killer. Was she young, old, light-haired, dark-haired, what? Oh, about uh, 18, 19, uh, college girl. Uh, dark hair, blue eyes. Uh, no real knockout, uh, except when she smiled. She had a real nice smile. Wait a minute. Did you say this girl got on in Phoenix? Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Now, isn't Arizona State right near there? Yeah, it's in the suburbs of Tempe. Come on, Mike. You're not really going to get uptight about it, are you? No, no, I'm not uptight. I just didn't think it was something you were interested in, that's all. Not a woman's field, you mean? Well, yes, I... No, no, I didn't. Look, there's no reason a woman couldn't build bridges and buildings like a man, I guess. It's not just building things. It's planning. Environmental architecture. You know, master plans for communities. Cities, even. Mm. I guess we can always use a lot of planning, couldn't we? You hate it. No. You do. No, I don't. If you can get to like my tuna casserole, I guess I can get to like the idea of you being an architect. Oh, I'll get it. Could be Val. Hello? Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Okay. Okay. You? Fine. I thought you might be dropping by this evening. Uh, no, not, not tonight, Jeannie. Well, how about tomorrow? Here, let me have that phone. Come on. Architecture, okay. Dating a cop, Nix. 10-4, Steve. Never mind. 10-4. What's this 10-4 routine? Did you hear that 10-4? Yeah, what's up? Is Jeannie off the line? Yeah, what is it? Okay, Norm, just stay there. Let me know what happens, right? Right. Steve. Lab's been working all night. Dusted the entire bus, came up with at least 50 good prints. What about the bus driver? Did you get his name? Yeah, Lettaker. Did you talk to him again? Nothing yet. Nothing. I want to see him. Right. Got the bus in impound. I called the Dean of Women, a couple of Valerie's teachers. They said exactly the same thing Jeannie did. No enemies. Had to be one. Could have been a freak trying to pick her up. Does Jeannie remember anything? No. There was one phone call I didn't want to make. And the driver gave me the description, and Mrs. Mercer said Valerie was coming home from the same school. I knew it had to be Jeannie. Good thing you called when you did. We went over to the Mercer's right away. Jeannie stayed the night with him. Valerie's brother's coming home this morning. Just wish we had a motive. That's the toughest. I want him. I don't care how tough it is.
That's him. You're sure, sweetheart? He's the one. Leonard Cord. You know? Yeah. I nailed him when he was 18. That would make him about, oh, I'd say 30 now. So I suppose some parole board decided all he owed society was 12 lousy years. Parole felons have to register when they come into a town. Yeah. Leonard C. Cord. C is for Collier. Did he register? I'll wait. I'm here. What's the address? Well, now, wait a minute. That's too far uptown for this creep. Okay, thanks. Want to make a house call? Mike? What did you arrest him for? Well, I don't remember. It's been 12 years. It's on his rap sheet. And since when does Iron Mike remember a name and a face and forget the charge? Now, you just forget it, sweetheart. I want to know. Now, what difference does it make? I want to know, Mike. Rape and murder. Open up. Afternoon. Hey, Sergeant. Good afternoon. Spread. You know a magic word is please? Just please. Get his jacket. Long time, Sergeant. Long enough to learn the harmonica? Oh, I learned that when I was a kid. Hard to believe you were ever a kid. Now, you've seen my rap sheet, Sergeant. It goes all the way back to when I was 12. That's when I was a kid. So now you're a comedian. You like the bright lights and center stage, eh? Huh. I got just a spot for you. All right, feet behind the black line. The uh, gentleman with a hat on, would you take it off, please? Don't think you were wearing it before. Thank you. Can you pick him from out of the line? The man in the middle. I couldn't miss that smirk. Get the bus driver. How can you be so sure? Because he was almost as close to me as you are. I told you before. Where was that? The streetcar stop. Well, what about the bus from school? Well, sure, there too. But the make you gave me came from what you saw at the streetcar stop. Mike, what's the difference? He was on the bus, he was on the streetcar. The murder was on the bus, not on the streetcar. Now, if you can't raise your right hand in court and swear to a positive identification, we've got nothing. Now, can you swear? Well, I can certainly say he was wearing that Mackinac. Cheney, baby. The defense attorney would beat our brains out with that kind of evidence. I know it was the same man. So do I. But knowing and proving are two different ball games. Don't worry. We'll see what the bus driver comes up with.
to do what's right, Lieutenant. You know that. I certainly do. You just take your time. I think it's smart, Annie. I'm not uh, really sure, but I'm uh, sort of almost positive. Good. Who? I'm not absolutely certain. Mr. Lenniker. The last guy on the right. He's been on the police force the last six years. Uh, that must be a real bummer. It's a murder case all roped and tied. Just in. stole it. <laughs> Brian, your playground sergeant. Lieutenant. That's the magic word, court, Lieutenant. Ah, uh, congratulations. Give him your jacket. Oh, yes, sir. Whatever's right, sir. Where did you board the bus? Bus? I was supposed to be on a bus? That's right. Phoenix to San Francisco. Came into town at 7.20 last night. Nah. Somebody give you a bump steer, Sergeant. <laughs> Where were you yesterday morning? Denver, Colorado. The Mile High City. Like boarding past Denver to San Francisco. Flight 103, right, right on the button. 3.40 in the afternoon. <laughs> You can check the one of the stewardess. She'll remember me. Her name's Patty. Why Denver? Why not Denver? Okay. Where did you go from the airport? Right to where you found me. Nice pad, huh? Not bad for a guy that you said never see the streets again. Is your harmonica? That's right, Jack. Who is Valerie Mercer? She's a dead chick. She got snuffed on the bus. Papers say. Hey, is that the bus? That 720 from Phoenix? Is that the one you're talking about? You were on that bus. Who, me, sir? No, sir. Oh, yes. You were playing the harmonica on that bus. Same song you're playing on the streetcar. Oh, do you mean to tell me there's some dude on that bus with a harmonica like mine? He's playing the same hymn. Amazing Grace? Well, ain't that some small world? What were you doing on the streetcar? Soaking up the sights, Sergeant. It's been a long time. It's been 12 years. Well, I guess that ought to do it, huh? Okay, if I pick up my stuff. I want you in town where I can find you. Oh, sure, sure. Because you and I both know where you were last night. You killed that girl on the bus. And this time, I'm going to slam that door behind you for good. Those with a telephoto. Pretty cute. It's got great legs. It's really got such a charming Please! Please! Mike, you're a boy. Come on! Give me a hand! Give me a hand! Mike! Come on! Take it easy, Mike. Take it easy now. You gonna tell me there's anything in criminal code about taking photos in Arizona or playing a harmonic on a streetcar? Huh? Book him! Book him! What for? For vagrancy. I'm not on that either, Sergeant. <laughs> Receipt, $2,800, Marina Hill condominium. He's buying it. Now, I don't have to pull civil code 899 to you, do I, Sergeant, huh? Unprovoked attack on a citizen by the constabulary, the police? You want to file five? Mike, Mike. Uh-uh. 26 years in the force with a clean record. The worst they do is give you a little suspension without pay. And that's not nearly enough. Not when you're evening up for 12 years of stir time. You so much as lay an eye on my daughter, and I tell you, I'll make... Lay an eyeball on your daughter? I'll do better than that. I'll drop by your house tonight with some photos of your little girl that'll just turn on his whole squadron. <laughs> don't you put a hand on her. To get you going. Now, look, why don't you get out of here? Get out of here before I let him loose. Now, go on. Come on, punk split. I'll just leave these photos with you if you like. I'll just take one just so I'll be sure people recognize her. Mike! No, Mike! Mike, please don't! Now stop it! No, please, let me go! I can't.
Quentin Gerhard signed up. It's a 24-hour trail on cord. But well, what about coverage on Got Jeannie? Got six guys working off duty. Well, keep on the war. Right. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right, A, he is buying the condominium. B, forget about the vagrancy. How so? Well, his father died while Cord was in prison. Insurance gave him ten big ones. Ten thousand? He also got twenty-six hundred when he got out, built up a lot of points in Q. He never spent a cent, played real good poker, and he peddled cigarettes. Oh, uh, one other thing. Cord uh, bought a used car, paid cash for it. Making licenses on your desk. Steve, yeah. Cord has more bread than you and me put together. Legit? So far. Couldn't get hold of the ward and talk to the prison doctor, though. Cord was having trouble with his throat acute. Doctor told me I have to have his tonsils taken out. Cord wouldn't let him touch him. Yeah, Stone. Pricey, what do you got? 1020 from the siege and Mike's daughter's at the main library. Doing what? Running microfilm of old newspapers. Yeah, I'm still here, Charlie. Look, Cord's prints have to be on that bus. Well, you keep that crew camped there until they come up with something. Microfilm? Maybe she's doing a report, Mike. Well, Norm didn't say. Beal called in from the airport. The boarding pass is legit. The stewardess remembered him. Said he was a real first-class jerk. Even remembered the green plaid jacket. What about Phoenix? He spent ten days there last month. Registered with Phoenix PD. No static. Yeah, Stone, go ahead. What kind of doctor? Okay, stick with him. Blessing. Cord's following through on that tonsil thing. He just left an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Let me lay something on you. Cord arrives from Denver, like he said, right? Makes sure everybody sees him. Then he picks up a cab. He goes down to San Jose or Salinas and picks up the bus from there. Oh, a cab could be traced. He'd hitchhike. Did you buy any of it? What choice do I have? Go ahead, try it. Oh, Steve, get those mugshots to every ticket peddler on the route. Where are you going? Home. Oh, I'm getting Jeannie out of town. What happened? Lessing and Lochner got burned. I put in a new team. Cord recognized them, huh? Larson and Gleason. Who? Law firm. Tough and smart. What, Cord hired them? Yeah. Olson's gonna chew me up and spit me out. Psychological warfare. Can't bust a guy for threatening. You can't kick him out of town. Can't make a move on him. No matter what he's got on his mind, he's had 12 years to iron out the rough spots. Listen, I finally got hold of the warden at Q. Now, Cord spent all his free time in the library. Legal, medical books, psychiatry, you name it. I'm scared. There are a thousand different ways he can get the genie. He can pick his spot. No, it's you he's after. Get you off the force for openers, then he can deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, no. He had his chance to get me when I decked him. It's not genie, Mike. I tell you, it is. You saw his calling card. What, Valerie Mercer? That's right, Valerie Mercer. Why would he kill that poor kid?
because he wants more. I tell you, it's Jeannie. It's Jeannie he wants. Are these the ones, sweetheart? It's going to be the safest place, sweetheart. You watch. About 100 miles down the coast. Cap's been retired from the force about a year now. Left town. And there's no way Cord's going to put it together. You just keep the doors locked. And don't drink any of Cap's coffee. Mike, I went to the library. Went through the newspaper morgue. I looked up Leonard Cord's crime. Mike, it was awful. Well, you just forget that you read anything. What he did to the girl. With a knife. How can there be people like that? Now, listen to me, sweetheart. Nothing. Nothing in this world means more to me than you. And your safety. I'm gonna stop him. Just a tape. Then he was here. Don't move. Jeannie's room, how did he do it? It had to be when Jean went out. When we were out getting flowers for the Mercer girl. Didn't you check the house when you got back? Oh, we were out looking for a cord, not that thing. Sounding good. Such a pretty voice, pretty face. Cause you're a great bod. Leave us alone. Hey, I dig your place, baby. That bed's so soft. Yeah, try it out. Stop it. Soft like you. reads like harassment. Now, you have to know that Cord's attorneys would contact the DA's office and they'd fire this thing right back down my throat. Okay, okay, okay. Is it a formal complaint? Not yet, no, but this is me to you, Mike, and it is formal. I, I can plead with you on this thing, and believe me, I do, Mike. But you can't steamroll this guy. He put a knife through Valerie Mercer. Jeannie is next on the list. We suspect that. But these lawyers have built this thing into a case of police persecution, brutality. You're lucky that punk hasn't pressed on that assault thing. That was a Bush play, Mike. Bush! Are you telling me officially that I better go by the book? I'd burn the book if there was a single shred of evidence. You've got one body already. Do you want another one? I want more than a harmonica. Okay, then you've got it. Take it! If I have a choice between that and Jeannie's life, I don't have a choice! Excuse me, Rudy. Mike, I talked to a dispatcher down at the bus station. On weekend arrivals like Valerie's, there's a lot of regular passengers, you know, commuters. You got something? 
Well, I got the bus driver working overtime. Did you take the tail off of cord? Well, I couldn't do anything else. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I think, uh, I think I got the flu. So I'm gonna lay low for a couple of days, all right? Gosh, too bad. Oh, uh, listen, if you, uh, happen to go out on the streets, you know, get a prescription filled or something, and you see cord, uh, would you give us a blast? Let us know. Are you going to talk to Ledeker? Yeah. Thanks, buddy boy. Ledeker! Oh, hi, Lieutenant. I understand you got something on those commuters. Well, I've been thinking. And? Well, after the dumb thing I did down the lineup. I don't care if you make a fool of yourself six times a week and twice on Sundays, you just spit it out, my friend. Well, uh, there's this old lady and her grandson. See, I... I pick them up in Salinas about every other Friday. Got a name? No, uh, she's a Mexican lady. Doesn't speak any English. The kid does all the talking. Well, what do you know about her? Well, the kid's father's up here undergoing some kind of therapy. Oh, and every other week they come up here and spend some time with him? Yeah, I remember uh, they get off here and then they walk. Now, they can't have much bread because the kid told me once they stay in some motel here around the terminal. I, I hope that's been some kind of help. I can't tell you how much. Thanks a lot. Hey, well, anytime you need some help. Senora Valdez, the uh, manager gave me your name. Que? Si. Oh, excuse me, but uh, hable inglés, por favor. No, senor. No hablo inglés. Comprendo. Policía? Si. Pase. Sí, gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Your grandson, uh, is he here? Nino, is he here? Roberto? Si, uh, Roberto, to translate. Um, hablar conmigo inglés. Ah, si. Sí. Él habla bien inglés. Uh, uh, ¿Dónde? La tienda. ¿Comprende la tienda? No comprende. 
fue a la tienda a comprar un helado. Oh, ice cream. Ice cream, sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí, aquí pronto. Oh, he's coming here quick, right away. Sí, señor. Eh, siéntese, por favor. Gracias. Siéntese. Hi. My name's Cord, Dr. Anton's patient. Oh, yes, Mr. Cord. Uh, let's see. I believe you're checking to... 201. Yes. Um, workup's all ready. Tonsillectomy. Actually, you're a bit early, though. There's nothing like a good night's sleep if you're gonna get your throat cut. Now, if you'll just fill out these forms, please. Yes, ma'am. Sure. I remember him. You're sure this is the man? Yeah. He played a harmonica. Now, look, look close. Are you sure that's the man that played the harmonica? Sure. It was a good one, too. I got a plastic one for Christmas once, but it broke. Son, this is important, very important. Where was he sitting on the bus? In the back. All the time? No, not when he quit playing. When was that? When he moved up behind the girl. The girl? Was she a beautiful blonde about 18 or 19? Yeah, I think he was trying to hustle her. What? You know, pick her up. I see it lots of times on the bus. And then he was sitting there, right there with her. Yeah. El puso su brazo alrededor su cuello. Recuerdo, Blita? Sí, lo recuerdo. Roberto, English, English, please. Karma remembers, too. That's when she made me stop looking. When he put his arm around the neck. Yeah, Haley. Yeah, Mike. Oh. I'm at the Star Motel 1300 block on Bay, room 31. I need a stenographer and somebody that speaks Spanish. Yeah, Vega's here. I'll bring him. Good. Anybody here about Keller? Nothing for the last couple of hours. Okay, then move it. Put on an APB on cord. Let it cord. Right. Well, I'm glad you could make it. We're a little understaffed, Mr. Cord. And overpriced. Those should give you a good night's sleep. You know, uh, I think we could have done better, you know? If there's anything else... There won't be. on the bus was playing a harmonica. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Steve just called in from a box phone. Wants you to meet him at the Legion of Honor.
Cord. Hey, Stone. Guess who's in the spotlight now, eh? I've wanted you for the past 12 years. You really thought I was after your little girl, didn't you? No way, Cord. Well, there's a way. There's a good way. I had a long time to think it all out. Guess whose gun's gonna blast your guts away, Stone? Uh-huh. And guess whose gun's gonna blast him? Right. Two uptight cops blast each other in the dark by mistake. <laughs> I got witnesses, Cord, who saw you on that bus from Phoenix. I don't care. There ain't got no witnesses the way she died. There ain't gonna be no eyewitnesses here either. Oh, they'll know, Cord. But that's what makes it so good, Stone. That they'll know. But they can't prove. I can prove. I was in the hospital in that Stone, sleeping, waiting to get my tonsils ripped out tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be two whole days before they even ask me any questions. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna kill you. Bullet! Hurt, buddy boy? I don't know what happened. You're okay? I walked right into it. No, that's all right. He had 12 years to rig it, you had two seconds to react. Look at me, you okay now? Yeah, yeah. All right, give me a dime. A dime? Yeah, that's what it takes. I gotta call my daughter. She's gonna wanna know if you're all right. she's called me that in 